Good morning, ladies and gents. Welcome along to the vlog. It has been a few days, indeed. And this is why, look at all that lot, which I've had to pull out of the ground. Let me just turn the radio off and we'll give you a little bit of a tour of what's been happening. So here we are in the backyard and uh, I think we moved the pipe work the last time I got a bit of a video, exposed the water main and yeah, we've shuttered and dug out all of the footings to the required depth. Uh, the, the old coal shed's gone. I'm pretty sure you knew that anyway. And then if we have a look down here, you can see all the way through the old porch to the front garden. And uh, we're just about finished. Just a little bit of leveling off, grading off to do down there. But what we're doing today is waiting for the inspector to arrive. And he could come at any moment, right, even while I'm recording. He said between 11 and 12 and it's now 12 o'clock. And I've also just spoken to a grab hire company. See if they can come out and remove some of this. So as you can see, we've got quite a pile. Quite a pile of, uh, of junk that we need to get rid of there. So hopefully they'll be um, able to come today and remove this. So what I'm doing, I think there's about 15, 16 tonnes here in total. What I'm doing is chucking some of this concrete, which is from the old paths and the old coal sheds and all that kind of stuff. I'm chucking this on the top because we're, we're almost at eight metres into the yard and I don't think the lorry will be able to reach potentially won't be able to reach if he does indeed come today so I thought I'd start a vlog because if he does come today I want to capture it on video and if I hadn't you wouldn't have been able to see this extensive pile of sand and stone that Gemma and myself have hand dug out of these trenches can you believe it it's taken us a long time but we've exposed all the services you see and what we didn't want to do is get a digger in. We'd have had to take the top of this down for a start to get in, which would have offered us no privacy in the back garden until the extension went back up, meaning that we'd have to find somewhere to store all of our tools. We've left the hand tools in the backyard, you see, during this, because there isn't much room left in the shed. So there we are, uh, just a quick two and a half minutes of footage to show you where we're at. This is the last little section of ground to dig out we just need to bit, dig out up to the house and then grade this off to about eight nine hundred mil as you can see down there and then we'll be ready to pour the footings i'm a very happy man we've just had the visit from the building inspector really nice chap as it happens um, and he's happy with everything we've done so far giving me a little bit of advice and uh happy for us to pour concrete I'll spin the camera around and we'll have another look at this so let's start over here so the original footings there are only about 150 mil thick so he's happy for me to along that edge there shut it off and then fill that block up so it meets the existing footing thus tying in the old building to the new all the services, um, which are going to be slightly above the foundation, um, is happy for me to just put some um, rainwater gutter in, like this stuff here, over the top of it. So put some expanding foam in either end and a bit of tape to stop the concrete getting in, if it does come up to that height. And um, he said that gives them them, like, if the foundations move... There's a, like a 50 mil clear space all the way around the pipe for the pipe to move freely within the footing. So that's problem solved. Uh, he's going to come back for the drainage and we'll have another look at that another day. But we've just got this soil pipe diverted. I've shown you all this before. All the way along here, dug out to the right length and depth. And then along this side where we meet the... A uh, coal shed that's not going to come down, belongs to the neighbours. He's happy for me to, on the day of the pour, undermine that concrete a little bit 
just to bring it out to the full width of 600 so not a lot probably back to where that brick's showing there through the concrete just there and um, just underpin it basically and he's happy for that to happen so it doesn't doesn't move because it's an outhouse it's not a habitable building he's just concerned if uh, if it's not backfilled then you know stuff can come out there and um, fall into a void so as long as there are no voids there he's going to be happy there again the copper pipe strangely continues to feed next door just needs a sheath just a sheath over it down here we've just got to measure the depth and mark out on the boards where the concrete's going to come to same again with the electricity supply just needs a sheathing and then he did query the gas he said have you spoken to Caden I said well I've been in touch with him but they want to relocate the meter onto the front wall obviously they can't do that till the front wall's built so he said the same thing sheath it make sure no concrete can get into the sheath pour your concrete and then at least when they come to change the meter it's all there and ready to rock and roll for them to do it so i'm happy what i'll do as well is i'll build a box into the wall so the meters on the outside of the building not, rather than on the inside we've got a soak away here but he's not really interested in that he said you're better off building a brand new one in the garden and then we've not excavated this bit yet but he's quite happy for me to do the same thing in the back just shutter it off so that the new foundation underpins the old not underpinned in the technical term but just you know it goes up to and underneath the existing foundation a little bit so i'm buzzing and uh, we've also moved all of that concrete from the shed the coal shed destruction and we've piled it on top of here and this is quite a pile I mean, if I just show you how tall I am, that's level, and it is, what would you say, five feet? It's about five foot tall. So there's quite a lot. It's as tall as the hedge anyway, look. I think there's about 15, maybe even 20 ton there. So hopefully they can get it on one grab. And then we've just got some bricks. I'll probably use these bricks to uh, build a feature in the garden at some point in the future. I'm not that bothered. Then a bit of rubbish that can go to the tip. One thing he did talk to me about though, <coughs> excuse me, is um, damp proofing against this wall because the neighbour wants to backfill to his garden level height. So on the outside of our new build, we're going to have a French drain, which then goes away to a soak away. But he wants me to build in engineering blocks, bricks even, up to the same height as the DPC next door and then we'll raise the cavity tray and the weep holes accordingly. We'll bring the DPC from the internal floor slab up the wall to the cavity tray height. And then on the outside he wants me to do the outer brick as double course to give it some retaining wall strength and also um, tank that wall with some kind of tanking agent i think they're like a liquid kind of thing that you paint on so i'm going to ask you guys out there how do i tank the outside of the wall what proprietary products are available on the market that are a cost effective solution to that point me in the right direction please but there we go i think the next video you're going to see about the build is going to be the concreting day um, which I'm really excited about but we've also got some developments at the brewery this week because yesterday I went to London to the pretty decent beer company and I picked up two cylindro conical tanks but to have a look at them you're gonna to have to click the subscribe button so you get notified when the next video comes out because that's where these brand new cylindro conical tanks are gonna feature and also just while I've got you on the hook uh, advent calendars no boxes available for them unless you're picking up locally but you can buy the advent calendar beers on the website now we are into December so you're probably better off going for the 12 packs but there are four or six brand new beers in there that I've actually not shown you on camera yet I don't think so if you're interested 
get yourself over to harrisonsbrewery.com forward slash shop and pick some up. We'll see you on the next video, guys. Thank you very much.